Hello, everyone. Welcome back with another NFL video. In this video, I'll be giving my predictions for the AFC North in the 2022 NFL season. So let's get into it. In fourth place, with fourth and the third place spot, I actually had a tough time deciding between two teams. Um, but I, I, at fourth, I did choose the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, uh, I do think that you know Pittsburgh. Even they didn't make the playoffs last year. I will acknowledge that they do have good stability. You know, Mike Tomlin's a really good head coach. You have Brian Flores on their staff now on the defensive side of the ball. Um, now, at quarterback, Trubisky, uh, Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett, I think Kenny Pickett should start week one. Um, I don't think that will happen, though. Mason Rudolph is, should not start at all at all for them. I think he is their third best QB. And Trubisky, you know, I know people, some people defend him. I don't really know how he was bad. You know, I should, should, should people say, well, he was a man, Aggie. I don't really, I, I mean, he was, but I don't really believe all those excuses. You know, he, I think he was just bad and he's a bust and he hasn't been a starter in a year. Trubisky will not do a single thing if he's starting for however long. I think Pickett should start week one. But I, if I was, you know, using, you know, like realistic predictions, I'd probably say it would be Tr uh, Trubisky out there week one. But hopefully for them, Pitt, Pickett takes over soon. I think he's better. And then you know, he also looked good in the preseason. And then Najee Harris, Benny Snell. Um, some other guys, they have Jeremy, Jeremy McNichols on IR. Najee Harris is a good second-year guy now. He had a lot of receptions last year, but not much like yardage. You know, he had a little, not very good yards uh, per catch. And then Benny Snell has been on their team for a while now. Um, now the roll line, it's you know probably going to hold their running back, their running game back again, even though with a really good running back. Uh, Dan Moore Jr. left tackle, left guard Kevin Dotson, center Mason Cole, right guard James Daniels, right tackle Chukuma Ako A Ko of Four. Okay, I know most of the players in the NFL, but three of those linemen I just named, I don't even know who they are. Um, and then they traded for J uh, Jesse Davis uh, from the Vikings. Now James Daniels is a good signing, but apparently he has not been doing good in uh, preseason. Besides, I mean, Kendrick Green, I know who that is. He was a starter last year from Illinois. They drafted him. Uh, I didn't think he was that bad, but regardless, their line was really bad this last year. Their only, their only attempt at improving it was James Daniels, and unless they drafted someone, I don't know. But James Daniels, you know, has been very good in camp anyway, and still have holes pretty much all over the whole line. So it should hold back their running game. Now it should, it should help that now they have a QB who can, you know, move in the pocket more. So, you know, I will give them that, but, you know, whoever the quarterback is still will be under a lot of the rest. The running game will not be strong, unfortunately. Now, the receivers, Johnny Johnson and Chase Claypool, were, were already a good duo. And now added was George Piggins, who's been doing good in preseason. I was kind of surprised when they drafted him, because I didn't think they needed a receiver, but they, they did lose Juju, but I still didn't think they needed one, but they got one here. They also drafted Cal, Cal, Calvin Austin, the third smaller receiver, but he's really fast. And they picked up Miles Boy, Boykin from the Ravens, so... Um, you know, I like the receivers. I will say it gives me hope that their passing game could be good in the future with, you know, Trubisky. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kenny Pickett. Deont Deontay Johnson has an extension. Claypool's an only in his third year out of, a, you know, with, with two years left. Uh, George Pickens is in his first year out of four on a rookie contract. You know, I think their pass offense could have some uh, have a bright future. Pat Fry moves there as well. So, yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh's offense, as I mentioned, the passing game, I would have hope. You know, I think that there are some receivers that can really do something. Pat Fryermuth, I like. Najee Harris, you know, I think he's a good receiving back, but his production on receiving in, in the receiving game might not be as strong, you know, with a bad O-line. And, you know, they just kind of forced him the ball last year in the receiving and rushing game. Um, but Najee Harris, I think, is still a good running back, and the O-line is not very good. On defense is the strong suit of Pittsburgh, you know, has been for a while now. Uh, even though I think it's a little maybe overhyped, maybe you know, uh, too high up in the rankings for some people, they're still a good defense. Their front seven is really good. Larry Ogunjobi they signed after his deal with the Bears fell through. Uh, Tyson Alawalu, um, Cameron Hayward, Chris Wormley, TJ Watt, of course. Uh, uh, Devin Bush is, to, is going into his fourth year. They declined his fifth year option, so this is, this is his last year with them. And they picked up Miles Jack, who had a concerning injury, but I guess he's going to be. Be, gonna be playing through it, and then uh, Alex Highsmith is good. He's a good uh, rusher. Levi Wallace, Terrell Edmonds, Miko Fitzpatrick, Cameron Sutton. And that's my real problem with this defense. The secondary, more specifically the corners. I think the safeties are fine. Miko Fitzpatrick, one of the best safeties in the league. Terrell Edmonds is fine, but Levi Wallace, new pickup, is not suited to be a corner one. Cameron Sutton, I don't think he's even suited enough to be a starter. Uh, Devontae Casey is on IR. Carl Joseph is on IR. They have a Kelly Witherspoon that he traded for last year from Seattle. James Pierre. Yeah, the Seattle defense. Uh, should be good at stopping the run. Should be should good. Should be good at getting some pass rush. Um, I think Miles Jack can definitely cover. 
The safeties are good, but the corners are really what concern me. But their defense should definitely be uh, near the top of the league, near the top of the league. In third place, I have the Cleveland Browns. Similar to why I said Pittsburgh was fourth, uh, or similar to what I said about Pittsburgh, I like, or I guess opposite of what I said about them. I said I liked Pittsburgh's uh, stability. You know, the Browns' uh, stability I don't like. You know, I would have definitely put them over the Steelers, but. So things that concern me there, you know, with Watson, he's now suspended for 11 games. Maybe, I honestly have a feeling by right before his, his suspension is done, um, done, you know, when he's done serving, I feel like some other things going to come out. He's going to be suspended for the rest of the year. All types of stuff, you know, I, I wouldn't even be confident that he plays the whole season. So maybe you have Jacoby Brissett as a full season starter. Maybe if he's not playing well, they trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. But, you know, I think he's already... Jimmy Garoppolo's already, you know, per, you know, kind of accepted the fact that he's a backup with the San Francisco. So it is possible that, you know, it would, it would be better for his career if, you know, it was a Cleveland maybe. But regardless, um, you know, they're, you know, they have a good head coach, sure. Stefanski won head coach of the year uh, a year ago. Now, uh, also, you know, even though that's the case, they have a great roster. They did it last year, they did it in 2019, and they just failed their expectations, you know. That's what kind of worries me here, or else I definitely put them. Uh, maybe even up to uh, my second place is uh, standards, but I have him at third. Now for their offense, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Dearness Johnson, uh, Mitchell Fallon. Something I, something I won't take away from them is that they have one of the best running back rooms in the league. Uh, uh, some good pass catchers in there as well. Dimitri Felton is basically a, you know half running back, half 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 receiver, half you know return guy. I really like him. And then Amari Cooper, Dominic Peoples Jones. David Bell. Now, David Bell was not a very good athlete anyway. He's from Purdue. He can catch the ball, though. I mean, obviously, Donovan Peoples Jones is like somehow a starter with them. Like, he wasn't bad, but, you know, after all the receivers, like, when he was drafted, they had so many good receivers, and now Peoples Jones is a starter because those guys are gone. Mark Cooper sure is good, but in this offense, in this offense, and combined with the fact that Watson will be playing, I don't think Cooper will have um, good production. Even though, like, they, you would still take that, you know, they traded pretty much nothing for him, so still, still a good investment. They didn't have to invest much and got Mark Cooper, so I, th I think he still, you know, got some good years left. Now, besides that, Anthony Schwartz, you know, Michael Woods, uh, Jimmy, Jakeem Grant on IR, unfortunately. Um, um, so yeah, the receivers are not very good. J their own line, or and David Njoku, you know, got paid big money, not very good, not hasn't really produced like a whole ton anyway. Harrison Bryant, you know, sure. Um, and now they're all online. Jedra Will Jr. is good. Michael Dunn, I've never heard of. Ethan, Ethan Pochish, I, I don't think I've heard of. Why Teller, Jack Conklin. Um, left tackle, right guard, right tackle are really good. Joel Batonio is fighting an injury right now. If he comes back, the O-line will just become way better. Now, the um, their O-line is still really good. So, similar to Cleveland offense, as we'll see. You know, even though they don't have Baker Mayfield, you'll see them mostly running the ball pretty effectively, I would say. And with Brissett, he'd probably just be doing game managing. If Watson comes back, then, you know, that offense with whoever, whatever offense they run, whoever receivers they have. I mean, we saw Watson in 2020 with the Texans. He, he would go off basically on any team in any scenario. So, any end full team that is. So, yeah, their offense should run the ball well. Passing the ball, I would not trust them. Um, I like their own line. I don't really like. I don't. I don't really like the receivers. Their tight ends. I like the two tight ends that do have. You know, they only kept two tight ends on the active roster. Kind of interesting. But yeah, that's the Browns offense. On defense now, Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney are a good are a good defensive end duo. Miles Garrett's amazing. Jadavion Clowney kind of finally reverted his career with the his NFL career with the Browns. You know, I thought he was just I was just pretty upset that he was getting contract after contract, big contract after big contract. You know, he was not good in his final years with the Texans, not good with the Seahawks or Titans, and then you know he was on the Browns and he actually did good. So I'll get, I'll say I was wrong there. Um, now, their defensive tackles are not very good. Jordan Elliott, Taven Bryan, Tommy the guy they drafted last year, Payon Winfrey they drafted this year. I don't, I don't really like that room for them. Jeremiah Wusu koromo is really good. Anthony Walker Jr., CEO and Talkie Talkie. Not a bad linebacker room at all. Uh, now, the secondary is also really stacked. Dennis Award and Greg Newsom, two are the, Greg Newsom the second, are their uh, top two corners. Uh, Newsom was really locked down last year. War has been good since he was drafted. He card a big new extension grant delpit you know I, he missed like his entire rookie year played last year you know hoping to see more of him john johnson the third it was a signing last year that actually you know worked out unlike the troy hill signing where they you know traded him this offseason after one year with the team Rudy williams is like a solid corner three martin emerson jr i think is also good um you know for where they drafted him 
and then backup safeties Ronnie Harrison Jr. and Richard LeCount the, the the third who was um, from Georgia last year so yeah I like their secondary a lot their defense um, I think they had a good rushing defense last year. Um, I don't think that should really slow down this year. Even though, I, you know, I, I don't like the defensive tackles. Their linebackers are good. JOK is a really good uh, linebacker of the future for them. And I think Walker Jr. is like a solid middle linebacker that they'll have for one or two more years, I think. Their secondary is really good, as I mentioned. So, yeah, I have the Browns in third place. In second place, I have the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley, uh, you know, those are those are their quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, you know, I don't really see have, him having, like, a huge year, but he should still have a good Lamar Jackson-type year. Last year before is, you know, I'm assuming he'll get a contract next year. I don't think the... I mean, I think he'll get franchise tag. Like, the Ravens are not going to let him walk into free agency. He'll get franchise tag or get an extension at some point. J.K. Dobbins and Mike Davis... Uh, Mike Davis actually looked good in the preseason from at least what I know and then you know but Jackie Dobbins was so good in his rookie season honestly so was Gus Edwards in 2020 um, he was not a rookie but in 2020 both of, both of those guys are coming back from injury I think they're both fully health at least healthy enough to play Ken and Drake they signed just Justice Hill also coming back from a big injury um, so yeah I, I really like the running back room this is where they facilitate the running game you know they have good Lamar can run and the running backs can run and their O line is pretty good so they're, that that's always a threat when you're when you're playing Baltimore. Now the receivers Rashad Bateman sure I, I I could see him having a nice year second year receiver but I mean James Roche the second really Devin Duvernay good, good good thing they don't pass the ball often because those last two games they named would scare me if those were those were my options you know. Tylen Wallace made the team you know he's. Um, he was picked last year. Slade Bolin's on IR, unfortunately. Demarcus Robinson, they signed from the Raiders. He um, had a big catch against Washington, and now he's on the team for the 53-man 53, 53 roster. Mark Andrews is a great tight end, probably the best tight end in the league for last year. I don't think he's the best tight end in the league going to this season, but last year, he was probably the best tight end in the league. Before that, before the 2021 season, you know, Mark Andrews was like a touchdown guy, uh, but not much yardage, like we'll say 900, 800, 700. But, you know, this year... A lot of way over a thousand, but I think over 10 touchdowns. Great season. Lamar's best option in the passing game for sure. Uh, Patrick Hart is a good fullback. Ronnie Stanley has dealt with injuries in the past few years. That's unfortunate, but he's back. Uh, ben Powers, Leonard Baum, they signed, they drafted in the first round. Right guard, Kevin Zeiler. Morgan Moses is on a three year cheap contract for $50 million. Juwan James, they also have as a backup tackle. And they also drafted Daniel Fayalele and Ben Cleveland. So the online is pretty good. Lamar should be protected. They should run the ball really effectively. Um, um, the passing game, besides Mark Andrews, I, 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 would, I mean, I guess I would hope for some good Rashad Bateman uh, production. But besides that, there was nothing I'd really like, you know, look forward to there. Um, but the Ravens offense, as with the Browns offense, they have their own like weird type of style offense, but it works. Um, you know, before Lamar, Lamar got hurt, the same, the same thing was happening last year. And even when Lamar got hurt, Tyler Huntley was... You know, still giving some defensive problems. So, I think the Ravens have a good offense. On the Ravens defense, on the defensive line, Justin Matabuke, a 2020 draft pick. Michael Pierce is back with the Ravens after, let's say, a failed year with the Vikings. Clayus Campbell is um, big and back on a two-year deal. He's, um, you know, their, their nose tackle pretty much. Um, or I guess maybe Michael Pierce is their nose tackle. I mean, they're both kind of nose tackles anyway. Uh, Adolfi Owe, I would expect a good year from him. He's a second-year player. Josh Mines, Patrick Queen, Justin Houston's back. That was like a good another option they brought back. Tyus Bowser, David Ajabo. To be honest, I did not like David Ajabo as a, you know a draft pick. I thought he was a bad run defender, uh, and he had like no pass rush moves. He is raw, so you have hope there. But you know, I don't really like David Ajabo, but a lot of people did. Um, in the secondary, Marcus Peters is back. Marlon Humphrey's back. Brand Stevens is there. Kyle Fuller they signed, but he was not good last year with the uh, with the uh, Broncos. Jalen, Ar Jalen Armour Davis drafted from Alabama in this past year draft. Safeties are Chuck Clark, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams. A really good trio. It might not be a good trio if Chuck Clark gets traded like he asked, asked for like a month ago, but I think I'll keep him. He's good. Marcus Williams, I really like. Kyle Hamilton, um, he's had some struggles in camp from what I've seen, but I mean, he can do it all pretty much as a safety. Um, so yeah, this defense, uh, looks Malik Harrison also, I forgot to mention. I liked him in a, a draft from Ohio State. I think 2020, I think he was where he was drafted the draft he was drafted in now their defense i like their d-line they also drafted travis jones um it should be hard to run on run on really you have two b big nose tackle type guys basically um pat the linebackers are fine you know patrick queen's been all right josh Bynes is like you know whatever the secondary i i do really i do really like it 
I'm not gonna lie to you. Marlon Humphrey was getting burnt last year. Not, like he, you, you was straight up getting burnt. Uh, Mark Peters is back. He is up there in age, but I think he still could have some production. Uh, he is. Let me check his age right now. He's um. Oh, he's only 29. I, okay, I thought he was a lot older than older than that, but he's 29 years old. Um, good defense. Um, definitely a, a good, you know, definitely a defense that can compete in this division uh, for the one spot. However, in the one spot, I do have the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, sure, some people. Now, I think some people are sleeping on them. Sure, some people think the Ravens will win the division over them. I, you know, I don't think that would be the case. Um, some people don't believe that they'll have this like crazy year again. You know, give back. Oh, it was just like a. Um, you know, lucky year got to the Super Bowl, all the lucky playoff wins. But this team just knows how to compete and win. This is what they did, and they'll continue to do that under Zach Taylor, who I, you know, kind of doubted, you know, after 2020. But anyway, Joe Burrow, great QB. Joe Mixon, great running back. He can basically run. He can have, he can have a good season behind any offensive line. Um, Jamar Chase T against Tyler Boyd. We all, we all, we obviously know is a great trio. Tyler, um, Hayden Hurst is their new tight end. You know, that's interesting. They picked up Devin Ossie. Ossie um, Drew Sample there as well. Uh, Jonah Williams. I think Hayden Hurst, by the way, is a downgrade from o Uzama, but you know, um, he was kind of un he was you know not playing much last year with Atlanta with Kyle Pitts being there. But anyway, uh, O line Jonah Williams, uh, left guard Cordell Volson and J Jackson Carmen competing there. Center Ted Karras. You know, he he can play guard as well. They they signed him from New England three years, eighteen million dollars. Alex Kappa. They signed literally like uh, two minutes into this uh, tampering period. They just call him. They're like. Uh, four years, forty million. And he's like bet Dylan Collins at Cincinnati. He's a great right guard, right tackle. Lyle Collins was a uh, was a clutch pickup. You know, there's a lot of guys going for him. The Bengals ended up getting him. They also picked up Max Sharping off waivers from the Texans. Um, you still have some some of the guys that they had last year, like uh, Trey Hill. I think they had Hakeem Adeniji, uh, Isaiah Prince. This o line is definitely a lot better. And I mean the Ravens offense. I mean sorry, the Bengals offense is pretty much the last thing they were missing to be honest. On defense. Uh, the, the defensive line is pretty much the same. Sam Hubbard, BJ Reader, DJ, yeah, DJ Reader, BJ Hill re, um, re signed to a new, new deal. Trey Hendrickson, Joseph Asai missed all of last year. That was unfortunate. Zachary Carter, I believe, drafted this year from Florida. Maybe it was last year. Drew Dufele picked up on from waivers from Jacksonville. Um, I, no, Zachary Carter was drafted this year. I just checked. Uh, Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt, Akeem Davis Gaither. Honestly, when they drafted Akeem Davis Gaither, I thought it was a good pickup. He was drafted around before Logan Wilson, I believe, but Logan Wilson has been playing a lot of middle linebacker and um, I guess just linebacker in general. And Keenan Davis Gaither has not been playing as much as I thought he would be. And then Jermaine Pratt's solid, you know. I have some beef with him as a Raider fan. He did pick off Carr to end our season, but I guess I will forgive him now. Um, in the secondary, Trudeau Uzie at corner. Eli Apple is still their starting corner. Um, I thought they'd take care of that in the offseason, but not, apparently they, they didn't. Dax Hill they drafted. He's like a safety slash slot corner from Michigan. Cam Taylor Brithy drafted at corner. He's on the IR. Mike Hilton is their slot. Um, Trey Flowers they still have. Uh, Von Bell, Jesse Bates are their safety. Jesse Bates finally returned to, uh, decided to return to their camp, so that's good news for them. Uh, they have Michael Thomas. Yeah, that's that's right. I did hear about that. Alec McPherson is their kicker. Great kicker. Kevin Huber is their punter. Great punter. I think he's I think he's been there his whole career, by the way, as well. That's and it's been a long career. But anyway, their defense is really good. Their D line is really good. The same, I mean, this, it's their same returning D line. Um, their linebackers, I think, I think, I think it's fine. Their secondary, I think, besides Eli Apple, is like actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, their defense should be good next year. Um, their team should be good next year. I think they. I, I, I don't know if they. I don't really think they'll be in contention for the one seed, but I, th I obviously will think. I do think they'll be a top four seed because I have the winning of the division. Uh, I guess you could see them back in the AFC Championship game. I'm not gonna say I don't believe in them to get back in the Super Bowl. I just think there's some better teams. Um, but I still. I, st I think the Bengals are going the right track. You know, I don't think they're going to be a one-year wonder. Um, Zach Taylor clearly was wrong about, of course. I mean, I think most people were wrong about him. I don't know who believed in him before this past season. I believe in the Bengals, though, in 2020. I said that they would be a good team in 2020, but it turns out it was a year early. They were bad in 2020. They are good in 2021. But, you know, I thought they'd be like... They took, like, a really quick... Like, I, I thought in 2020 they'd be, like, a playoff team. And they weren't. They missed the playoffs. But And then I thought that in 2021, um, that's when they would take their, you know, leap to, you know, even better team. But you, after they failed their season in 2020, I'm like, okay, maybe they'll just have to, have to try and make the playoffs in 2021. And that's like their max, but they just went up and reached the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I was, I was a year early on their, um, you know, call, calling their breakout year. But 
Anyway, the Bengals are a really good team. This is a really good division. Uh, Brown and Steelers maybe holding it back. Browns with the Watson with the instability. Steelers with maybe with the you know lackluster offense. Maybe I mean, it could be a lackluster offense was last year. Maybe their rookie quarterback can fix that. Besides, and maybe their line won't be fixed. So that's next year's problem in the offseason. But anyway. I'm Arto, and that was my uh, standing predictions for the NF AFC North in the 2020-12 season. And thank you for watching.